If you've ever wondered what the difference is between a soft rotor, a medium rotor, and a hard-boiled off-roader, well, this is the video. Now, we've brought three cars that in no shape or form compete except that they're family haulers, but they will demonstrate the difference between three types of potentially good off-road vehicles. And I have brought the soft rotor. Yep, I've got the brand new Audi A6 all-road. Tommy, what have you brought? Now, the medium boiled off-roader for sticking with the egg analogy in this video is the Kia Telluride, but not just any Telluride. That right there is the X-Pro, which is the adventure version of the Telluride. So it's got some suspension changes. It's got an all-terrain set of tires, but it's not the most capable here. Andre, what did you bring? And I brought the big hard-boiled egg. <laughs> well, actually, no. This is the all-new Land Rover Defender 130, the biggest family hauling Defender you could find. Three rows. Yeah, and it has decades of legendary off-road experience baked right into it. So this is the hardcore off-roader of this three. Gentlemen, I sense that you guys aren't feeling my, um, let's call it egg analogy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I get the egg thing here. <laughs> All right, how about we go with this? The all-road will take you to the cabin. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. The Telluride will take you past the cabin. And the Defender will take you up the mountain. Yes, yes, I like that. So how do we show that? Well, we are out here at Bunce School Road in the Colorado Rockies. We got snow on top of ice upon more ice, and we're going to see how these vehicles perform up this trail. So we're going to run the Audi up first. We're going to go till it gets stuck, which I think is going to be right away. And then we're going to go to the Kia gets stuck, and then we're going to hopefully prove that the Defender is the most capable. So this is um, pretty difficult terrain actually because what we have here is a thin layer of snow covering a really thick layer of ice. I don't know if you can see that, but under the snow, all we have is pure ice. So this is gonna be a really challenging terrain. And the other thing too is that this beginning part is really articulated. And especially up there, you gotta be ready for uh, some approach angle challenges. And I'm not sure that the, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure that the Audi is gonna get past this. You know how I said that this should make it to the cabin? Well, I'm a little worried about this car because this is the ironclads and it's not a trail that goes to a cabin, but a hard off-road trail. And this car has uh, very little approach angle and it costs $82,000 and it belongs to Audi. So maybe I can get Tommy to spot me. Hey Tommy, uh, I'm a little worried about this. Can you spot me? Oh yeah, we're gonna try to get you up this safe without damaging that Audi that doesn't have Pretty serious underbody protection and of course has a lot of fancy uh, fancy body work on the front end. Here we go. Oh, I hate breaking things. You know, as a kid, I still have all of my toys because I never broke things. Some people just like to play hard. I'm not one of those. I like to return the toys in the same way I found them. All right, let me say I'm good. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Stop there. So we're gonna barely clear it in the front, but you have too much wheelbase to clear it on the other side. Um, we only have maybe an inch here to the nose. You want me to go and uh, take a, a different route? Yeah, let's try bringing you up the right side here. And we're gonna put the wheel on top of the, the bump here. So this Audi All-Road has 20-inch wheels, not grand, and it's got Continental Pro Contact all-season tires, not grand. However, it does have an off-road mode and air suspension, and when you put it in off-road mode, it raises the car 1.2 inches to just over 7 inches, which is, okay, not grand, but it does have Audi's legendary Quattro system, which hopefully will help put the power where the traction is, even though I only have all seasons. Yeah, try it like that. I'm getting stuck for some reason. All right, let's kind of guide your way up here, and then I'm gonna have you stop, because I don't think we're gonna be able to clear this part. Oh, stay on this side.
Am I spinning wheels? You got two wheels spinning, but it's not, not that many wheels. Um, Quattro system is trying to limit spin. That's really interesting. I mean, the gas, I'm not moving, or barely. Is your, is your traction control system off? I guess it's off. Yeah, my traction's off. There it goes. Look, I'm at uh, 1,200 RPM. There it goes. Give it a little bit more. I know, but I don't want. I don't want to. Keep it moving. Yeah, now I'm doing it. Yeah, I'll try. All right, I think I made it past that first obstacle. The issue is though, even in the off-road heights, there's just not a lot of clearance to spare on any of this terrain. It really is that close to scraping the underside of that Audi. Now, seven and a bit inches of the ground clearance is plenty for daily use, but for uh, for stuff like this, you really want to have a little bit more ground clearance. Quite honestly, the issue is I could bash this car and I could fly up that hill um, and it'll do it. The snow will go flying, but then I think parts will also go flying. And you know, here's the conundrum, right? When you have an $82,000 all road, that's great on road and okay on dirt, but you take it up a trail, the problem is you have an $82,000 expensive Audi that you know expensive things break and it doesn't belong to me so I, I really don't want to have, pick up the phone and call Audi and say you know sorry guys I was showing that you can make it to your cabin and it didn't uh, or it did but it did with a lot of trail damage all right Tommy your turn come on up all right here I go the X-Pro version of the Telluride is designed to add some capability to this wonderful three-row crossover. So you've got these 18-inch wheels with the Continental Terrain Contact AT tires. You have changes to the suspension. You've got calibration changes to the track control, all intended to make this at least a little bit more capable than a standard Kia Telluride. Now this Kia has a 3.8 liter V6 with 291 horsepower and a conventional eight-speed automatic yeah, transmission. No problem. Get more ground clearance than the Audi for sure. Yeah, right around eight and a half inches of ground clearance. Yeah. And immediately I'm gonna tell you that these tires are sticking really surprisingly well. Now I have the Kia in its snow mode, and then I also have the all-wheel drive system locked up, which is gonna to try to distribute wheel speed at front and rear. Okay, we're gonna start lifting up some uh, some tires here. So far so good. Ooh, good all-wheel drive response. So we got a wheel slipping there, and then the brakes grabbed and set power where they needed to go, and that was really impressive. And the nice thing is, we have a conventional torque converter and not a dual clutch, so we had lots and lots and lots of um, torque delivery to the ground in a smooth power modulation. This is child's play, my friends. Let me show you how it's done. Well, those guys just brought a knife to a gunfight. Um, with the Defender, I have a lot of off-road goodness baked in. For example, air suspension with the most ground clearance. Really great approach angle. I have these Continental Winter Contact tires, snow rated, snowflake rated. So I think I will have the best traction. I also have low range. Land Rover invented terrain modes. Uh, so I'm feeling really, really great. By the way, all of us have Continental tires. That's pretty cool. My Defender is telling me that my center differential is locked, which is pretty uh, pretty good because I am in snow driving mode. My suspension is lifted all the way up. I'm in low range, which means I have a lot of torque. I can modulate it just right. So right now, at least, I'm not worried about my clearance. I am wondering about this ice I'm trying to go as slowly as possible so so far easy peasy this first section is very easy I mean, I mean you've got miles of ground clearance and great articulation and low range 
Um, I say we uh, leave the Audi here, guys, uh, and proceed up the trail with the Telluride, followed by the uh, Defender. All right, Roman, do you want to jump in with me? Yeah, I'll jump in with you. I'll let Tommy uh, na navigate us. You want to go first, Tommy? Yep. All right. Now I would love to do this video on three matching tires, but we have to drive the vehicles as they come to us. We can't modify them in any way, so the tires that come on them are the tires that we have to test. So uh, the Audi was 82, the Defender is 92,000. How much is yours? This Toyota is 55, and from looking at it in here, you would have no idea. We've got this beautiful brown leather with this fantastic dark wood across the dash. All the buttons feel amazing, and even the points that you wouldn't expect to feel good have a really high quality feeling to them in this Telluride. The interior on that Telluride is as good as the interior on this $92,000 Defender or that $82,000 Audi. Wait, 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 wait. Tommy, do you have two sunroofs? Do you have heated seats? Do you have ventilated seats? Do you have a giant screen? I have all of those things, Andre. Does he have low range? Do you have low range? No, sometimes the capability of the X Pro is the most capable of the Telluride, but it does not have low range, it does not have significant underbody protection. And as we start climbing up higher here, I'm starting to hear a little bit of scraping oof, on the other side. But you do have a center locker. Well, it locks the all-wheel drive system um, as best as it can. It's not a true uh, center differential, I don't believe. And even though I don't have a low range, the low end torque of the 3.8 made it to this eight-speed automatic means that I'm still a, it's got good control in this vehicle. Yeah, it's funny. All three of these cars have uh, V, well, not V6s. Okay, six cylinders. Andre's got a straight six, 395 horsepower, right? Yeah, and I do have a mild hybrid system. Uh, which is not like I don't have an all-electric range, but I do have You know smoothness of powertrain and lots of torque as well 406 pound-feet of torque And you've got what uh, 295 horsepower Tommy and the Audi 335 out of that turbocharged 3 liter Yeah, we're gonna film a bit here. I think I might be uh, running out of clearance I think with how I see it is, the car is going to go where the car is going to go regardless. I can try putting them over the ruts though, we can try that. Alright, give that a shot because I, I think otherwise you might scrape. Little does he know, I've been scraping all this time. Okay, there's five miles an hour. Foot to the floor. Oh no! Oh no! Come on! Yeah, yeah, let me try some tricks of the trade here. I'm gonna go traction control off, first gear, snow mode, lock the all-wheel drive system, and give her hell. Come on, come on, Kia. Show me what you got. Oh, it's spinning. Hey, Tommy, that trick of the trade got you even less. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll try going into the ruts. All right, give it one more college try here. Come on, come on, Kia. There we go, oh, it's just getting worse up here. All right, well, uh, let's see if you can make it through this part, and if you can't, I think we're gonna have to all pile into the Defender. Try it. Come on, Kia. Show me what you got, buddy. Oh, no. I can't go through the ruts because I'm just going to get high centered. Alright, uh, what do you say we call it, Tommy? Yeah, this is a real pickle. All right, and now there is one. And there are really three different factors that come into play when you're wheeling in the snow like this, trying to get past the cabin, obviously. First are the tires. So the Audi has, of course, the worst tires. Next, 
is power. They all about the same amount of power. Then ground clearance, where we ran a ground clearance here and basically started to high center the Kia. But most importantly, and people don't think about this, is how willing are you to break your vehicle and do damage? And with me and an $82,000 Audi, I wasn't able to, well, I was able to, but I wasn't willing to go there. But uh, let's see how the Defender does now, going up the same place where Tommy got stuck. Oh, no. Welcome, Tommy. Yeah, yeah. I was this close, but I didn't have the clearance. I, I have a compliment for you. Yeah? Um, all four tires on your Kia were spinning. Yeah, dude, that uh, all-wheel drive system was yeah. kicking butt. Yeah. I was but, really impressed. Let's see what you can do, Andre. What mode are you in here? I'm in off-road mode, um, snow mode. Snow. Oh. So now, as the music comes up, <laughs> I'm gonna try to give it some beans. Shall we? Yeah, give it some beans, Andre. Alright, I have the clearance. I'm not too worried about my clearance. Alright, I'm gonna try it. Good work. Although 22s, you know, if I was to do this all the time, probably 20 inch wheel would be more appropriate, right? Oh, uh, yo, for sure, or an 18. Yeah, you got yeah. a lot of fancy rim there, not a lot of sidewall. Yeah. All right, guys, uh, this is where Tommy got stuck. Yep. Can you make it through? I think I'll do the Nathan method. You How about take that? the Nathan method, <laughs> which is go to 11. <laughs> yes. Or maybe 21. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do the Nathan method, I think. Get there, let me get through this. Whoa! Okay, come on! Oh yeah! Nice! It's like a rally stage! Okay, it's doing it. As you say, Andre, ooh doggy. Yes. All right, you want to stop here? We're almost to the top. We got to get wow. that cresting shot. All three of us are in the Defender. Yep. We're almost to the top. You know, I can put eight people in here, right? Eight? Yes. Is it an eight seater? Yes, it's an eight seater. It's a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, I got to say, on a combination of the ground clearance and the grip on the tires. Now, the grip on the Telluride tires was very impressive, but the ground clearance is what got us limited um, in terms of how far or fast we could go because they couldn't take things much faster without ripping off under shields. Yes. But the Defender, we've got 11 plus inches of ground clearance in these higher off-road heights and we're just trucking on up this hill. Yeah, you know, it's like a dance partner, right? Some dance partners want to dance and some don't want to dance and this guy certainly wants to dance. <laughs> yeah, but look at this. We're almost cresting the top of the mountain here. Now we, we can't really go any higher without a a winch, let's be honest, because we, uh, we get this ice sheet, but um, I'm pretty impressed with how the Defender did. I don't think I'm going to um, attempt Razor Rocks. Right not on now. 22s, dude. Not on 22s. <laughs> Alright, well, let's close this video up. Okay. Hey guys, I think kind of we proved what we set out to prove, right? If I was going to my cabin on a dirt road, Audi, no problem. I think so. The Quattro system is still really good. Yeah, and if you want to go just past the cabin, the Telluride is actually really impressive for a three-row crossover. And Andre, the Defender. Yes! I'm going to do my dance on top of the rock soon. But I got to say, the standout in terms of value here for me certainly is the Kia, right? $55,000 yeah. and it's as nice and as three rowy and almost as capable as the Defender, which costs 92,000. I would agree completely. That's a lot of money. I mean, it's capable, but $92,000. Well wow. guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below and where can folks find more of us? They can find us at alltfl.com. See you guys next time. Ciao. Yes. Oh, I see fire. They're doing the prescribed burn.